This is The Guide Gals, a modern, wedding-focused podcast by the experts at Here Comes the Guide. I'm Chelsea, a designer and inspired creative who's probably racked up over 8,000 hours on Pinterest and the friend who's going to shoot it to you straight. And I'm Caroline, a social media manager who is obsessed with dogs as ring bearers and will inevitably cry over your wedding video. We've seen it from all sides. We've been brides, planners, bridesmaids, and have worked with stand-up brands throughout the industry. Think of us as an extension of your wedding party and hang out with us as we share the ins, outs, ups, and downs of the road to I Do. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Guy Girls podcast. Today we're going to be talking about tons of ways for you to save money over your wedding planning process. Yes, another money-related episode. I know budgeting is so important. Um, And the hard truth is that the costs of everything in the world that we live in today seem to be rising. So Mm -hmm. with that, weddings really are more expensive than ever. But good news for you, we have some tips and ways that you can save money. And Mm -hmm. I think also right now, more alternative wedding ideas are also more popular than ever. And those can be money saving compared to more traditional routes that you might take. So there are things you can do. Yes. Yeah. And I really think a key in a lot of this is to stay flexible and creative, really try and reach out to vendors, trusted industry professionals. Obviously we're here for you to help you think about these things, but the more you can think outside the box or remain adaptive um, is really going to help you be able to save money. Yeah, absolutely. And if you are a couple with a tighter budget or you have a really big goal to save money along the way, really just keeping in mind the big picture and like letting everything else kind of fall into place, which of course goes along with being flexible and adaptive where you can. So right, yeah, remember you're getting married at the end of the day and it's going to be great and it's not worth going into debt over or anything crazy like that. So yes. Yeah. Of course, we're going to jump into all of that. I just need to know what is the beverage of the day? My beverage of the day is a vanilla latte from Starbucks, Mm. which like Starbucks vanilla lattes are like different than other vanilla lattes. Yeah, I I agree. They are less than other vanilla lattes. Like Mm. they don't taste the same. Yes. I never go for vanilla when I go to Starbucks like I'm I'm never gonna choose that as an option when they have so many other great ones but I do like I love a classic mm-hmm. vanilla latte my favorite vanilla has to be I don't know if you ever tried this but Duncan for a period had a smoked vanilla oh my oh, gosh that. it was insane it was so so good way better like I don't even know what to compare it to but it was it was like that true vanilla but it also had like a depth of flavor that I wasn't expecting but I wasn't mad about and I would do anything to have that back so if Dunkin or Starbucks could come back with that I will be indebted to you forever and I will be a a big old customer I feel like didn't didn't Starbucks have like a toasted something like a like some sort of like toasted yeah yeah, but it like was not good yeah like I don't I don't think it was I think it was bad. Like, I think no, that I people, that. like, the overall review was that it tasted like a candle. No, you're so right. Which, like, yep. Nope. Okay. Smoked vanilla, not toasted, whatever it was. I <laughs> hear my dog coming upstairs, and I definitely closed the door so she couldn't get in. My beverage of the day is basically hot chocolate with a shot of espresso. I just like, Mm. I have this new hot chocolate that I've been loving. um, So I wanted that, but of course I needed the caffeine. So that's what I got in my cutie little travel mug. Yeah, your mug is so nuts, like in a good way, but like it's very funky. The person was like, oh, I created this so that like you could go on walks and hikes without it spilling. So it's supposed to be better um, and doesn't spill up. I wouldn't have thought about it like that. That's actually what convinced me to buy it because I was like, you know what? I think I probably need that. Okay, well, I think it's time to get into it. Um, So we are going to list out some of the top ways to save money or some of like our like ideas that will make the like most significant saving for you Mm. Uh, so we're going to go through these and then we have some more at the end that we'll just kind of throw at you but 
Something to keep along, keep in mind along the way is that there are lots of ways to save money that we're not even mentioning here. We mm-hmm. also have some resources on herecomestheguide.com, lots of ideas on budgeting and how to save money, and we have other budgeting episodes that we have recorded as well. Um, and we really very firmly believe that starting out before you even jump into your planning journey you should lay out a budget for yourselves talk about it and be really honest with each other with what you guys can afford and what you Mm -hmm. want to spend maybe you don't want to allocate as much money to the actual wedding maybe like traveling means more to you and you want to do more Mm -hmm. of a honey like you need to have these things figured out before you really get into it but once you are you know, really into that planning stage, here are some things um, that you can do. So the very first one is to limit your guest list. So mm-hmm. it's going to be like the single most impactful thing that can lower your overall cost of your wedding. So the the total cost of your wedding is really, it, it pretty much is based on the guest count. So the number of guests not only determines the size of the venue that you need to rent out, but it determines the cost of food and alcohol and all of the things really wedding favors like anything that goes into it is going to you know the more people that are at your wedding the more it's going to cost so if you look at your wedding as a per person expenditure uh, and you're dividing that total cost into like okay how much is it going to cost per person it's a really easy way to look at it so yeah, this is something that you can consider limiting. It's, it's something to think about. So I know that this can be really tricky too. Like building a guest list is, you know, mm. it, it can be difficult because a lot of times you might not feel super strongly even about including every mm. single person you've ever met in your wedding day, but family members <laughs> may push back on this, um, like letting you know that, oh, hey, like we need to have your great aunt there and... I don't know, mm. whoever else these cousins that you haven't talked to in 10 years that it, those things might be more important to your family so you just really need to weigh these things out and another way that you can do it too is limiting like plus ones I would be careful on this just because you do want your guests to enjoy their time there I know a rule of thumb that people sometimes use is you can only have a plus one if you're married but I mean just with this day and age, I know a lot of people are like less traditional with even like being married and stuff like that. Mm. So just keep in mind that you don't want to like make certain people feel super excluded or Mm. anything like that. But limiting your guest count is a great way to bring that cost down overall. So yeah, lots Mm. of factors to think about in that area, but but definitely something that'll make a huge difference. Right. Yep. Because the less people, the less food, the less space, the less like everything kind of. Mm hmm. I don't want to say diminishes from there, but like the cost is definitely less from there. Yeah, it is. (laughs) All right. Another way that you can save money um, is to get married on a weekday. I know Saturdays are like definitely the most popular date, but you can save a lot of money even just uh, by doing a Friday, by doing um, a Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever. You can really like strategically plan for this. Memorial Day weekend, maybe getting married the Tuesday after, maybe someone's okay with taking an extra day, but you already have that whole weekend beforehand to take off. You know what I mean? So that's just a a, a interesting thing to think about. And I know you might be thinking, oh my gosh, like, well, then more of my guests will have to take off work. Honestly, a lot of times they're going to take off work one way or the other, whether you're having it on a Saturday, a Friday, a Sunday, or during the week. And Saturdays, because they are so popular and so in demand, they're more expensive. You're going to have more expensive packages on the weekends. Um, Saturday definitely being the most expensive. Then we see, I think, Fridays and Sundays kind of just following shortly after. And then anything Monday through Thursday being even cheaper. And a lot of venues offer deals and discounts if you do book for the week. One thing to consider, though, with this is you will probably want to give ample um, heads up if this is something you choose that you're going to do a weekday and just really being good about communicating that. You can also opt for if you are doing a midweek wedding, um, doing something in the evening, doing something later in the day so that if you do have a lot of friends who work a nine to five, maybe they have a little bit more flexibility to make it to that. So yes, you will have to consider the area you're in, how far guests are traveling and such, but definitely look into the options of weekdays if that is something your schedule can accommodate because you can save a ton of money. Yeah, weekday weddings are just becoming it seems like more and more popular and I think mm-hmm. venues are super excited to accommodate these and 
like Caroline said, also really open to giving discounts. So mm-hmm. yeah, they're, in the past, I don't think that weekday weddings have been as popular as they are now. And those right. have been days that venues just haven't been able to fill. So um, yeah, like I said, it's exciting for them. And I think that to me, like that sweet spot is in those like Thursday, Friday weddings. Mm-hmm. And then you, I mean, you get the whole weekend after that to celebrate. And yeah. a lot of people, if they are taking a day off, um, then they get that weekend to celebrate too. But, but yeah, you have to keep in mind that you'll probably want to, you know, somewhat cater at least to those people who are working a nine to five. Say you do choose to get married mm-hmm. on a Thursday. It would probably be ideal to have your ceremony in like the late afternoon evening so that if people are working that day, they can make it there. And keep in mind yeah. too, that there might be some people who, just can't get off work but and they they might not make it to the ceremony part but they'll be there for the reception so Mm -hmm. yeah those are things to keep in mind it's a great way to save money potentially if venues do offer discounts for those days which they they most likely do Mm -hmm. but yeah be flexible and accommodating like like we said at the beginning of the episode (laughs) because it, it might not be exactly exactly traditionally like what you thought if it would have been a saturday but yeah it's a great thing to consider Okay, the next way to save money is to book your venue as early as you can. And this really doesn't just apply to the venue. I think book any of your vendors as early as you can. Some might even offer like somewhat of a discount for booking really far in advance. I have heard of this. Um, But the other thing to really think about is that year over year, a lot of venues and vendors as they um, gain popularity, as prices go up, um, as they get more experience, they might change their packages, rework them a little bit and raise their prices. So the Mm -hmm. earlier you book, um, and of course, like you don't know for sure if a venue or a vendor is going to raise those prices and change their packages, but keep that in mind that it is a possibility. And the earlier you book, the more likely you are to be able to avoid that um, price jump yeah honestly I feel like for venues yes but also for for vendors like th- that just goes across the board like as early as you can book something uh because all vendors all venues are going to have price increases at some point whether that's because of mm-hmm. inflation or just because of demand or whatever else so the earliest you can book things as possible is better because you could incur later fees or just they might up their their rates the the further that you go along in the process so as early as you can get those bookings in the better another way to save money in this process is to prepare for unexpected expenses this one might seem like less of a way to save money and more of just a way to be really real with yourself about this process and make sure that you have the appropriate amount of money Um, but also the more you prepare ahead of time, the more you could potentially save. So things like if you are looking into booking a certain vendor and then you realize there's actually a lot of fees that you weren't expecting. um, If you're preparing for those ahead of time, you may be able to book with a different vendor who doesn't have those fees involved. So really what we're talking about here is to look for the hidden wedding fees. Um, We have a whole episode about this, things that you might not expect to have to pay for. So listen to that episode, but even things along the lines of um, tips, gratuities, emergencies. So Here we really want to stress that you should put aside maybe like 5% of your overall wedding budget towards emergencies, towards unexpected costs. Um, And if you don't end up using that 5%, great. You save that money and you can use it towards something else or just put it back in your pocket. It's just a good way to be aware of what the process looks like, be aware of those expenses so that you can potentially save or just you know, be prepared if those expenses come up. And if you are a couple who, if, and if you're listening to this episode, you probably are being really cautious about your budget, trying to find ways to save money. You should absolutely go back and listen to the episode we did, Things You Might Forget to Budget For. It's episode number nine, but there is, there's this is a long list of things like mm-hmm. hidden costs and stuff that you just didn't know. If you've never gotten married before, if you've never planned a wedding before, there's a lot of stuff yeah. that people have never heard of, cake mm-hmm. cutting fees. It's hard to know. Things. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a lot of stuff. So yeah, it, it's just really great to be super aware of all of it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that 5% is going to help you in the long run when those things inevitably pop up. For sure. <laughs> right on. <laughs> 
The next way that you can potentially save money is to think seasonal and local. So this is really going to come into play with your catering and your floral expenses. So when you buy what's in season, you get food and flowers at the peak of their supply when the supplies is, or sorry, when the price is naturally lower. So when they're grown locally too, you don't have to worry about shipping fees, having them shipped like across the country or from somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So you can opt for like pasture raised chicken over imported shellfish maybe you decide to do wine from like a local vineyard instead of having it imported from Italy or something like that (laughs) but once again this is going to be Um, somewhere where as soon as possible is better. So for Mm -hmm. flowers and like for really anything, letting them know what your plans are, what your expectations are, so that way they can source the things that they need as quickly Mm -hmm. as they can and possibly even be able to source them before they're at like a low demand if that is to happen. Yeah, yeah. Something to think about for sure. And also things that are, especially when it comes to food and flowers, which I'll talk about in a second, um, mm-hmm. but when I think about food, when you don't eat it in season, it also tastes so much worse. Um, you're going to have a better menu, That's a true. better overall look and feel if you are thinking in season and great. It's also going to be cheaper and thinking about foods still, um, our tip number six is to simplify the menu. So when you're thinking about appetizers, do you need five different options, maybe three works, or maybe just one uh, when you're thinking about what you're going to feed your guests. Maybe you even simplify it to like kind of the same option, but done three different ways. So there's at least a little bit um, of variety. There's a lot of things that guests will still love, um, even the simplicity of it. Like maybe your cocktail hour is a French fry bar, which might be cheaper than what we talked about with like seafood options or tons of different options. Talk to your caterer about this. Talk to whoever is doing your food because they will have some money saving expertise to let you know like here we can do this or even like Chelsea said earlier like maybe we do chicken options instead of seafood options especially if you're in your landlocked state. Seafood is always kind of questionable to me in that aspect but another thing to really recognize here too is Your vendors, especially your caterers, might also be working up against some supply chain issues or staffing issues. Um, That's that's definitely something we've heard a lot about recently. So know that they are going to come up with some of the best options to still make sure that everything runs smoothly, but they may have a smaller team, but they also have so much expertise to know, hey, this is what we're going to do in terms of saving money towards the food. Here's what we're going to do in terms of the staffing shortage, how we're going to manage it and go around it. That's really where hiring someone with a lot of expertise, a lot of background in this can save you money. And that doesn't just go for caterers. That could go for anybody. But the expertise is really invaluable because they are going to be the ones that really help you save money, especially when it comes to figuring out how to still have a beautiful meal and a simplified menu so it can save you some money yeah and especially if you approach with like being really clear about what you want Mm -hmm. uh being clear about what your budget is so having that once again this goes back to being prepared on your budget making sure you have it really laid out but if you approach a caterer with all of that in mind they're going to be able to work with you of course they're experts in that field so Mm -hmm. they'll know exactly what combinations that you can do what options you have and also There are caterers out there who have more like all-inclusive bundles or packages. So they might Mm -hmm. be able to do the food, um, but also they might be able to provide the bar service and even like the cake or desserts or stuff like that. Mm So that might be a big money-saving thing too if they have some sort of bundled package instead of going individually for all of those like three different vendors um, that are offered. There are also venues like venues that have more of that like all-inclusive they do the on-site catering this is a way to save money too um so some venues will have all of those things included like you can get the cake there the catering the bar service like everything's there and that might come with your wedding package so things to think about (laughs) in that yeah yeah for sure yeah Okay, the next thing you might want to think about in terms of saving money is to buy in stock or off the rack attire. So usually, especially with like wedding dresses, um, you want to order these like sometimes like a year in advance and Mm. you go to the wedding dress shop and you try them on and then you get like a custom dress. But I think it's 
becoming more popular or maybe I'm just seeing more of it like being like working so much in this industry Mm -hmm. but there are a lot of um like off the rack wedding dress options that are really beautiful and they're at a much lower price point so yeah a lot of companies are doing that and like I said they have great options but there's also always the option to purchase like vintage or used wedding dresses um used like sounds sad but like almost like passed down like I know a lot of people will donate their wedding dress after their wedding which is also an option for you maybe you um get a wedding dress that was donated and you want to give back um, and keep it in rotation. But yeah, there's lots of options out there, especially I think the vintage can be super cool Mm -hmm. too. If you know maybe your mom or a family member too, you want to rewear an old dress, maybe just tweak it a little bit. Alteration fees will certainly be a lot less expensive than purchasing an entirely new dress custom dress too Mm -hmm. and there are really great off the rack options for suits as well so just keep your eyes open look on the Mm -hmm. internet Um, a google will do you great um, for searching for off the rack options and more inexpensive options for wedding attire across the Mm -hmm. board yeah and there are a lot of different places to go Um, of course there are places like you hear of David's Bridal. I am a huge fan of Anthropology Weddings, which used to be Beholden. Mm-hmm. I had gone to a couple of different stores when I was looking for my dress, and I did visit a store which was just purely off the rack, like either older seasons or different things. And what really helped me was that I tried on dresses at other stores. So when I went to the off the rack store, I was like, do we have this option? Like I've already tried it on elsewhere or like tried on this style or looking for this specific like beading option and that was really helpful for me so I ended up going in between an anthropology wedding and an off the rack option uh I ended up choosing the anthropology option they also I didn't think they were super expensive in terms of what I was looking for um one of my friends got a really great deal at anthropology weddings as well so off the rack option for sure also if you do have a place that you really love I keep saying anthropology weddings just because that's what I love um, and that's what I have experience with, but they do seasonal sales. So looking out for those sales as well um, at any store that you go to can be super helpful. And like if you go and plan your whole trip around that time frame, um, I think my friend and I went around Black Friday and she got her wedding dress for $400 and it's an anthropology wedding dress fully beaded. It was insane and it was beautiful and amazing and she needed a just a very simple she just needed a very simple alteration to it so it was so so cheap in comparison so yes off the rack options are really great or if you're looking at a certain brand just be aware of any of their sales or ask associates about like hey is there a sale coming up or whatever else doesn't hurt to ask and looking for those ways to save money is great yeah, that's so smart. And it reminds me like when I used to watch what Say Yes to the Dress when I was younger. Remember when they would have that episode with like the sample sale? They'd be yes. like, it was so crazy. There are people <gasps> so- lined down the street. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's not, not totally related. I'm not sure if they even do something like that anymore, but they might. And that's such a good yeah. point is that everywhere has sales where they need to clear stuff out at some point. Mm-hmm. They're bringing in that new inventory. And yeah, that anthropology line is so beautiful. So- and really like comparing those prices the 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 stuff that they make is so similar to the more like custom like designer mm-hmm. options out there and they really are like I feel like they're like a third of the price so oh um, my gosh yeah yeah, yeah. and really I didn't need stuff. any alterations well okay I need to get mine hemmed because I'm short <laughs> but I didn't need any other alterations to mine which is amazing and so it ended up being way cheaper than some of my friends who went to like even David's bridal or other places yeah Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, tip number eight in ways to save money is to find alternatives to expensive flowers. So again, like we've talked about before, thinking seasonal, thinking local, and really trusting whoever your floral designer is, whoever you've hired for this to help you find um, cheap options that still look amazing. So some of those examples could be I know a lot of brides who love peonies, who really want peonies, but if you're not getting them in season, and sometimes even if you are getting them in season, they're crazy expensive. They are beautiful, stunning, probably one of my favorite types of flowers, but there's a lot of different 
alternatives that you could do. There are some similarly stunning garden roses that can give you the same look and feel. Um, There are tons of different things and being able to work with people who understand these swaps that will still give you the, the look, the feel, the color, whatever else it is, is really helpful. And there have been times where I've had to do this where I've worked with some floral suppliers where a color that I wanted wasn't available. So they helped me decide, okay, am I really trying to stick with that color or am I really trying to stick with the look of the flower? Um, So we swapped for a different color of these um, sweet peas and it was beautiful. It was awesome. But you need to work with someone who knows some of these things because a carnation will not always be a good alternative to a dahlia. So just being able to work with people who know this is really important. Other ways to save money on flowers is to, um, you could even forgo fresh flowers entirely and do dried florals or you can do fake flowers. They can still give such a beautiful look. I know there's a lot of places out there that say you can't tell the difference between artificial flowers and real flowers. You can tell a difference, um, but that's not always a bad thing. That's really not always a bad thing. There's so much you can do with fake flowers, with dried flowers. You can mix them in with fresh flowers to make them go farther. If you're working with a flower designer who understands how to make ceremony arrangements that can then be transitioned into the reception that's another great way to save money instead of making arrangements for both the ceremony and the reception being able to use them in both places can save you a whole ton so really again like we said at the top of the episode being creative being flexible thinking outside the box can be really helpful in any of these ways to save money but again also trusting those industry professionals like florists to help you find ways to save money while still accomplishing the look that you want yeah um and the next point this kind of like leads us into it like along the lines of like decor and all of Mm -hmm. that diy so approach with caution i feel um but diy obviously is going to be a big way that you can save money um Mm -hmm. maybe even like you have people that you know that that do things that can help you like lend a hand or you have a family that's really happy to get involved but it keep in mind that DIY doesn't mean free and it still is going to cost you money and it's going to be a big investment of time so I know just personally for myself non-wedding related I see DIY projects and I'm like oh yeah like this is this is great like I'm gonna do this I'm going to go to the craft store. I'm going to get what I need. Mm -hmm. And then I get home. I've spent just about as much money as I was going to spend or as I would spend if I would have bought whatever I'm creating like new. Um, And it looks it looks like garbage. Like I have (laughs) like failed miserably. So just keep that in mind that like DIY can really be very stressful and DIY should be approached probably in small chunks Mm -hmm. especially if you don't have a ton of help and if you have no help and it's just you and you really want to DIY maybe pick one thing Mm -hmm. to DIY don't go crazy like seriously approach with caution because this is also I know that we said like let's be flexible and let's be adaptable and let's go with the flow but at the end of the day this is your wedding day it's a very Mm -hmm. important day and if you're listening to this podcast you clearly care about the planning aspects and you probably want it to go a certain way and you probably want it to feel really special of course it still will feel special okay things are going to go wrong like there's no avoiding that but Mm -hmm. DIY if you dare okay it's just be very careful with it it doesn't mean that you have to do it all yourself seriously if you are going to DIY make sure that you have a team of helpful people behind you family members Mm -hmm. wedding party whoever it is I really just I I realized I I really put down DIY in this segment here no no I just want to (laughs) emphasize (laughs) how big of a time investment it it is is. is. and how if you effectively communicate, like we've been mentioning throughout this episode so far, if you can effectively communicate with your vendors what your budget is and what you're hoping to achieve and you're just like really honest and clear about that, you can get a result that you're looking for. Maybe not exactly, exactly, but they will work with you. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So yeah, but you know what? Some DIY projects turn out so fabulously and mm-hmm. are amazing. So and yes. Yeah, you might also have a friend who specializes in something that you want to include. 
And so they may be totally willing to DIY with you or even for you. Great way to save money. Again, though, realizing if you're doing that DIY or if your friend is doing that DIY, it's going to take somebody's time. And time is precious. So if someone is DIYing for you, make sure you give them a big old thank you. Make sure you seriously lavish them with like, thank you so much. You're such a huge help. This is such a like big part of my wedding. That's coming from a standpoint of someone who has done a lot of DIY for other people and didn't always get the recognition. And that's fine. That's fine. I don't need it. But it's just, I was so excited to pour into somebody's day. And most of the time people are so excited. So make sure, give them a lot of thanks. But also, this isn't me talking from experience. This is me talking from somebody else's experience in our wedding horror stories. Also, just be aware, again, DIY with caution. Um, If somebody is a family member who is a amateur photographer, that to me is kind of DIY and a little bit like do it yourself um, if they aren't a professional. And that can get tough. One, from a family member aspect. Two, just from an amateur aspect. That's hard. So I know we sound like we're poo-pooing DIY a lot. We're just saying like think through everything recognize the time that it takes even if you are saving money recognize the time that takes and think through all of the implications because you don't want a DIY to turn into a disaster yeah and I want to say on that too I guess this is like a little bit of a tangent when it comes to DIY but if you do have a friend or like a second cousin who is some sort of wedding vendor maybe they're like a wedding photographer you should never have the expectation that they'll just like shoot your wedding for free Mm -hmm. you don't know that they might not want to do that they might want to come and enjoy your wedding and not be working at your wedding Mm -hmm. like they might seriously they might not want to do it and they might be you just have to figure out what you need to like lower expectations when it comes Mm -hmm. to that and you can approach them if you'd like them to be part of it but I would definitely not expect anything to be done for free especially Mm -hmm. like in something I know Caroline you've done a lot of florals for weddings you can't you could never expect someone to do florals of any aspect for your wedding for free Mm -hmm. unless that they're also like gifting you the cost of the flowers like everything like there's a cost to literally everything and that does not even include that person's time so maybe you do have a close friend who is a wedding vendor in some aspect and maybe they're happy to give you a bit of a discount but maybe they can't afford actually to completely do whatever they do for free for you so Mm-hmm. yeah I would say unless you're trying to make enemies don't go in with certain expectations or expecting them to yeah. do it all for you <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. big asks those are big asks big for sure all right and then one of our last money saving tips until we have a couple rapid fire ones after this um, but it's to get clear on your must-haves we talk about this a lot non-negotiable must-haves are really important to nail down figure out closer to the beginning of the process this is important to figure out because it's probably what you'll want to spend more money on these non-negotiables these must-haves and you and your partner may have differing opinions on that I know for me photography was really important that was something that I was willing to spend more money on and my husband didn't really have any non-negotiables he didn't really care but that's a really good thing to really talk about to figure out okay where are we going to allocate a little bit more of this budget to and maybe where are those other places we can save because if you get clear on those must-haves, great. You've already budgeted towards that. Maybe that helps you find the places where you're okay with saving a little bit of money. Maybe you don't care about favors as much. Maybe you forgo them entirely. Maybe you really care about the food and having a live band. Okay, well then you were not going to have a videographer. Totally fine, whatever you decide. But getting clear on those places where there are must-haves and non-negotiables will help you figure out where to invest and where you can cut costs. Yeah, this is something too that we talk about in some of our earlier budgeting episodes as well. So Mm -hmm. laying these out like right at the top of your planning journey can just help you figure out exactly how Mm -hmm. you are allocating your funds and distributing them to make up your whole budget. And like Caroline mentioned, something to keep in mind is that if you do have some really strict non-negotiables and you have a certain budget, it might mean that some of those other things that don't fall into your must-haves are going to fall away. So you do probably have to pick and choose, Mm -hmm. at least pick and choose what ones you're really going to splurge on. And a good example of that is like you may have to 
change your vision just slightly. Um, but if you're, again, if your non-negotiable is I want a beautiful dress and I want a beautiful, like a photographer who really just gets my vision. But then when you're thinking about decor and style, you wanted this like custom arch with like overflowing with flowers that's expensive. And so you may have to adjust other parts of your vision accordingly, have plan B and plan C for things that are not your must haves and find those ways to cut costs there. That is something just to, again, a place where you can think outside the box, think of those substitutions, be flexible, talk to people and get other ideas. So yes, you can still accomplish your vision, but save money in the places where you can. And if you are working with vendors, once again, especially if you're working with a planner, they can help you with this, especially, Mm -hmm. you know, like figuring out the best of the best and like where you can tweak things to maybe save money or eliminate certain things and what is appropriate and like what you really do need to have on your wedding day. Mm -hmm. A planner for sure can help you with that. And even like venue owners and coordinators and just ask questions uh, when it's available to you. Okay, so we talked about some of the top and biggest ways to save money, but of course there are going to be more and Mm -hmm. there probably will be a lot more for you even that we didn't talk about it all today just based on your unique circumstance. But I'm going to just list right now a few more ways. So the first one, consider getting married during an off season. So this maybe would mean a winter wedding Um, or if you're getting married in one of the really hot states, getting married during one of those hotter times of year. Maybe you just do it later in the day. Sometimes venues will have cheaper rates depending on the season. Consider having your entire celebration at one location. So this is much more popular, I think, than it used to be. But instead of having separate locations for your reception and your ceremony and maybe even your cocktail hour, having them all in one place can really help to like bring that cost down because you're only maybe paying one rental fee. Next is really embrace all-inclusive packages wherever you can, especially Mm -hmm. venues that have that are all-inclusive venues. So that can include a number of things. It might even include stuff like accommodations for like your honeymoon suite, that kind of thing. Um, Yeah, I mean, the list goes on there. But all-inclusive can be a great way to save money overall. Yeah, we've talked about this before, but all-inclusive can sound scary at first when you see the overall price tag. But if you also look Mm -hmm. at that per person count with the all-inclusive package, you might realize pretty quickly you're actually saving money. So just a caveat there. Make sure you look into that yeah. money a little bit because all-inclusive, it can be a great option. Yeah, and then just like when you go to a nice restaurant and it's a la carte, you know you're spending more. So when like that pretty much goes for every category everywhere. If stuff is mm. totally a la carte, in the long run, it's probably going to cost you more money. Okay, next is you can find an out-of-the-box or an unconventional venue. So I've seen people get married all over the place but you can get married at like a public park maybe that that was like yeah. a random example that was like no that was good that, that was allowed? good sometimes um. yeah they have sometimes they have really cheap fees they don't do anything else for you but you just rent the space right and it, they, they, they might have yeah like like really low cost but make sure that wherever you are getting married you're allowed to have a wedding there you can't just show up and get like true, I mean, true. check things out but um i've seen people get married like in a bookstore before that's so mm-hmm. cool i don't know there are lots of options and ways to save money on that you can also opt for more casual food options i know we talked about this with the food but you can also do stuff like as casual as like food trucks and i know that those Mm -hmm. are super trendy right now but that food can a lot of times be a lot less expensive than like a plated dinner and honestly it's super fun so people love it that's something to think about you can choose basic vendor packages so With venues and vendors and like everybody across the line, they will usually have like a baseline package and then they usually will have like more inclusive, not inclusive is the wrong word, but more extravagant packages as you go up that just include more like for photography, for example, the baseline Mm -hmm. package might include like less hours overall. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's just something to check out. You do, you can still potentially work with all of the different vendors and maybe even like some of your dream vendors if you decide to choose their lower level packages. There are also ways to save money on cake. So a few different ideas here. I know what's really popular is to do 
a smaller like display cake one that you actually cut that's like the really pretty one it just might be really tiny but then you want everybody to get cake that is invited to your wedding so you do sheet cakes too so these are just kind of hidden in the back and then after you do your cake cutting ceremony they serve it up and there's nothing fancy about them necessarily but they still taste really good and no Mm. one like no one knows the difference anyway (laughs) you can also opt for an alternative dessert People do donuts. That's super popular. Cupcakes mm-hmm. can be a lot less expensive. There, I yeah. mean, there are lots of options here. Think of a dessert mm-hmm. that you like. You can probably have it at your wedding. Do your research and budget early. We've stressed this throughout the episode and in our other episodes. We really do believe that you should be making a wedding budget before you start your planning journey. That's step mm-hmm. number one. Figure that out. You don't want to enter your planning journey and also your marriage in a bad financial place. Um, Mm -hmm. Money can just really cause like a lot of contention in relationships. So be smart about it and be ahead of it. Figure that out early on. Uh, Another thing to think about is to reserve room blocks. So a lot of times these will come at a discounted rate and this can include like your honeymoon suite too in there. So Yeah, and a lot of times too, depending on what venue you are going with, they might have either accommodations there where they offer room blocks or Mm -hmm. they might have like preferred hotels or accommodations like recommendations and connections that they have and they can set up those room to help you to set up those room blocks and get discounts where you can. And also if all of this sounds like a huge bummer to you and really stressful, (laughs) you can just like elope. Yeah, fine. For sure always an option everything is an option for you you can do whatever you want this is your wedding yes and if you choose to not have favors great don't have favors if you choose to have really simple yeah if you choose to have really simple decorations to save money great that's awesome um really do what's best for you if you really still have this elaborate vision use some of these tips be flexible be creative Rely on those vendors venue to help you figure out, you know, what's the best option and really where you can still accomplish your vision, but save money, blah, blah, blah. Things we've already said before. And if you have more questions about it, though, let us know if you have a specific like, how can I save money around my wedding attire? How can I do this? We will have answers for you, like an answer off the top of my head for how do I save money on attire? You can rent a lot of wedding attire. That's also that. true. Mm -hmm. that can save a lot of money so see there's already some more that we can talk about let us know and either on our website or in social media get in our dms we could talk more about it but we want to just give these kind of general ones that i think everyone can use if you have some more specific questions please let us know yeah and and really like let us know we do love to hear from you so if you have Mm -hmm. any questions on budgeting or on any other topic probably pertaining to weddings would be best. Um, You can find us on Instagram at the Guide Gals Podcast. Um, You can always shoot us a message there. We would love to hear from you. But you can also reach out to us, like Caroline said, on our website, which is theguidegalspodcast.com. You can find our contact page there, and that will just shoot an email over to us. On our website, you can also find our full episode library along with a full freebie library where there's Mm -hmm. lots of free planning resources, printable stuff um, that you can print out and help you along the way if you like to have something like a little bit more tangible for your planning. You can also find us on TikTok at The Guide Gals Pod. And all of our episodes are on YouTube on the Here Comes the Guide YouTube channel. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. We love talking about budgeting because it really is, and like ways to save money, it is such an important piece to the planning puzzle. And it really is so important to take it seriously and be smart and proactive about it. So that way you don't start your marriage off on a bad financial foot. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, we're pretty passionate about this one. So yes, 100%. I feel like we say that about everything. We're passionate about it all. Really what we're passionate about is being able to walk alongside you in the planning process. It's fun for us. I hope it's good for you. But until the next episode, I guess, then, cheers. Cheers.